Hi and welcome back to my garage. Today we have a 2002 Golf GTI MK4. True. And also a wheel bearing replacement like I did uh, a month ago on the Renault. But I thought uh, most of you guys uh, don't drive Renaults but of course awesome JDM vehicles. And some of you of course some great German vehicles like the Golf, uh, Golf 4. Personally, I don't like the Golf, but it's, it's, it's a great car. I can't uh, argue with that. A friend of mine came to me and uh, he had a bad wheel bearing. So we're we going to replace them together. So he's also uh, here in the room. And let's get started. Well, this is uh, the same, uh, almost the same kit as uh, you have seen from the Citroën, uh, the bearing the nut and the retainer. Let's hope that this retainer is uh, coming off much easier than uh, the Citroën one was. But that, that was a nightmare if you have seen that video. So uh, now we're going to jack up the car and uh, get, uh, get uh, ready uh, to work on, uh, on the wheel bearing. Well, first uh, we check uh, why uh, we're going to replace the wheel bearing. The wheel bearing is uh, really, really bad. So I don't know uh, how that that happened, but uh, well, we're going to replace it. Just pl please uh, do it again, and then uh, side to side also. Well, the wheel is on it, but. <laughs> it didn't uh, take much to become a freewheeler, I think. Okay, the nut for the drive shaft is a 30 mm 12 point socket uh, of you have to use a 12 point socket um, and it's a 30 millimeter so let's go that one was really loose uh. yes. I know it's a powerful tool but uh, that wasn't good so we think that uh, the nut has come off in uh, it was already loosened. It was loose, and that's why uh, the bearing has uh, going uh, has gone bad. Well, first we uh, remove uh, these two uh, Allen heads. Those are uh, seven millimeters. There is a little, well, a cap on the. If I can get the cap off, little cap uh, on there to keep uh, dirt and uh, moisture out. If uh, you don't have these caps, please be sure to clean uh, the bolt up really well. You don't want to strip this out. So clean it with a bit, a bit of uh, penetrating oil and then with a pick or with a brake cleaner. Please be sure that the Allen key is uh, all set to the bottom because else you're going to st strip them out. So. You don't have to uh, pull them uh, completely out. You can do that like this, but uh, you don't have to. On the front side of the caliper there is a retaining clip. You need to pry off uh, it right here. Don't uh, push it around these corners uh, because you will bend the clip. So you need to pry it from, uh, from behind like here. With an old screwdriver. Ooh, I've got free hands. 
Is that what's going on? So, and now you can take off the caliper, like so. Well, at least your uh, your brake pads are still uh, okay. So and the disc also. The uh, disc is also fine. For, uh, oh, you know what I hear? Peep. Yeah, from the the sensor from the oh, it's um, it made a connection. It make a, yes, it made a connection with the. Wow, oh, that was funny. Well, um, how long did you have this uh, disc brakes and uh, and pads on it uh, for a very long time? I think uh, you, two thousand nine. I think five years, six years, it's almost seven. Seven years. So uh, these are from uh, well, T R V W T R W. So, uh, yeah, these are uh, great, uh, great pads. And, uh, and you make a lot of miles with it uh, also, eh? I think at least uh, 100,000 miles. 100,000? No, miles, not miles. Uh, kilometers. Yes. So it's about uh, 50,000, 50, 60,000 miles? Yes. Something in Probably. that range. So, uh, well, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of life left, so uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. Well, let's uh, get going. Be sure to uh, secure the caliper. Don't let it hang from the from the hose, because you will uh, damage the hose. Um, well, next up is uh, removing the the caliper bracket of the caliper bracket. It's a uh, what is it? 17? 18. 18 millimeter. Yes. So it's uh, 18 millimeter. Well, normally uh, these uh, brake rotors are very stuck on the on the hub, but because we used uh, NTCs with the uh, installation, you can see that uh, it came off very easy. So if it's stuck, uh, just use a uh, rubber mallet and just uh, gently uh, tap it from the from the the back side of the of the rotor. So it uh, then it will uh, come off. Normally, also I have to mention that. The caliper is holding with uh, two of a one bolt here. Um, drilled the head of the, the bolt because they didn't get it loose. It's not the classiest way of doing it, but uh, oh well, it's uh, it is what it is. Well, now we install our slide hammer. Use the adapter piece on the on the hub with. Uh, with the wheel bolts, you don't have to tighten them up, uh, just to make it snug. Slowly. I think it's, it's almost, almost there. there huh? Yes. Please support this because uh, we don't want to damage the ABS ring. Yeah, you can bake. Yes. Was it? it? Yes. It's really fucked. Ooh, I'm a German. Victory dance. Well, uh, it looks like uh, the lottery uh, trumble. Well, what's your winning number? <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad it's off. Well, that was one of the hardest uh, we've ever done. Oh well, it's out. I'm glad. 
well, normally it uh, doesn't take this much effort, but they can be uh, stubborn sometimes. But this is uh, just taking the crown right now. So this one for the books. Well, uh, next up is uh, removing the the reta retainer with some uh, retainer pliers. Have your safety squints ready. Ow. That happens a lot. Well, it looks like it's loose. Oh. This one isn't going to be uh, that much of a problem. Well, we did say that before. Just the way we like it. We do it, we like it. So, um, we take the 3D bottom ones off now. Those are 13 millimeters, by the way. Now I just uh, yank uh, on the strut and as you can see the axle is now coming, uh, coming loose as well as the bearing. Yeah, that's the other half. You don't have to worry to uh, yank out uh, the complete axle. It's a uh, other construction, so uh, you don't have to worry about leaks from the uh, transmission. So, uh, but but of course, be careful with it. But uh, you don't can uh, jank it out of the transmission case, so you do, at least you don't have any uh, transmission fluid uh, dripping on your floor. Now, now uh, we use uh, other special tool you need to buy. It's a uh, it's a bearing puller. This is also a, a kit of, uh, well, was it around uh, 50 euros, uh, well, uh, 50, 60 US dollars, I believe the cheapest one is uh, on the internet. So uh, you have a uh, long rod with some cups and uh, some discs, and uh, that's the way how you can pull it off, of pull it out from the car. So the cup is going on the outer side of the bearing. So you can pull the bearing into the cup and on the inside if you uh, remove your hand uh, as you can see the inside is a disc uh, just be su sure it's a little bit smaller than the, the bore and uh, the disc is going to pull out the bearing into the cup so uh, just tighten it up Yeah, it's, it's coming. Or, uh, yeah, it looks like it's uh, it's going right now. It's going much easier than before. Well, you don't need to go to the gym if you work on cars, so uh, it's a win-win. Feel the burn. Ah, there it is. We could have used an air hammer, you know. Yeah, but now I have worked it out a bit on a Saturday. Be sure to uh, clean up the boring where the 
bearing is sitting and also the, of, uh, the, the groove for the retainer clip. Be sure you uh, scratch that out uh, firmly so uh, the clip doesn't uh, come off. Just use some uh, brake cleaner. Do we now uh, make an uh, advertisement for Motip? Mm, of course. <laughs> so uh, no, we um, use, uh, use some brake cleaner and uh, if it is a bit rusty just use a, uh, some uh, Scotch-Brite pad or something like that and uh, well use a old screwdriver well uh, this one is new <laughs> looks like you're using a new one now but uh, normally you use a old screwdriver you need to use a uh, a disc that's the same diameter as the the bearing at least as close as possible because you don't want to only push on the inner race or uh, well the center where the uh, the sealer is. You want to uh, push on the outer race with the disc. So be sure to uh, to check. And as you can see, this one is just fine. Well, as you can see, we have to install the tool now. Uh, first, uh, uh, this is the disc. This is the bearing. Be sure that the bearing is uh, straight with the bore. Of as straight as possible, and then uh, behind it we use a carpet bit. Also, you can use a uh, well a disc behind it, but now we don't have uh, to thread it in uh, as much. So now uh, it's a matter of uh, tightening it all up, and you will see that the bearing is pulled in. Just be sure that the uh, disc is uh, centered on the on the bearing, and as you can see, it's uh, pulling in uh, just fine. Just keep going until it bottoms out. It should be around now. Well, just one more. Wait. One more pull. Well, I think it's in. So now we check if uh, if you can see the. The retainer groove, then it's all the way in. Oh. As you can see, the retainer groove is uh, just outside the bearing, so uh, we're golden now. In. Very easy. The easiest part so <laughs> far.
Okay, next uh, we're going to install the hub. Be sure you use a uh, disc on the inner side that uh, fits just snug in there. If you don't do it, you will uh, pull uh, the inside uh, of the inner race out from the bearing and uh, well, then you're screwed because you need to replace it uh, again. So uh, a disc that uh, fits snug in the bore and then uh, just stick in uh, the hub. And now it's a matter of uh, tightening everything up again. Be sure that the hub is uh, straight and uh, just be careful, don't force it. Just uh, you will feel if it, uh, it, it's going crooked, then you really need to stop and uh, realign your tool. But it looks like that uh, it's going in uh, quite smooth. So. Uh, until it bot bottoms out and then just uh, to be sure well that looks fine to me so now it's a matter of uh, unscrewing the tool now we can uh, install the axle again into the hub just a matter of uh, Pulling the strut a bit out, stick it in, line the splines up, and it will uh, come together. Well, that's a uh, you need to align the CV joint with the lower arm. You can use a screwdriver, uh, as you can see, to uh, line up the holes. Before we install the the rotor. We need first to uh, clean up the hub as good as possible so that uh, the rotor is flush against the hub. Now uh, before we uh, install the rotor we use some ceramic grease, but you can also use anti-seize. So the, if you need to remove it again, it will come off uh, easily. Normally you line up the, the holes with, uh, with the little bolt of the yeah, a little bolt right here, but uh, because it's uh, snapped off, we're going to use a uh, wheel nut or wheel bolt to keep the rotor in place. If the bolts are too long, you can use a, uh, well, in this case, a spanner, so it uh, keeps it uh, on its, or in its place. So you don't have to fight the caliper uh, or fight the rotor when you put the caliper back on. Well, as you can see, we didn't tie the, the nut for the axle uh, down right now. Um, so be careful when you uh, install everything because, yeah. It's only hanging on the bearing, so maybe it's better to uh, tighten it up a little bit first before we uh, go any further. Yes. 
this. Yeah. So now at least this is secure. We don't uh, damage the bearing uh, while putting everything back on. So uh, we will uh, torque them down to spec in a moment, but first uh, we install the caliper uh, caliper bracket. Clean the surfaces as good as possible. It will be a bit rusty. Shiny. Just uh, use a bit of anti-seize to uh, put it all together or some ceramic grease. It's just what you prefer. Before we install the caliper, we need to uh, push back the, uh, the piston a little bit, a bit backwards uh, because, uh, well, it makes the installation a bit easier. So uh, just grab the biggest plier, pliers you have. And just squeeze it in just a little bit. That will be, should be enough. So now we uh, clean it up and uh, we can put it back. So clean up the pads. At least the sides of the pads as good as you can with just a uh, steel brush and put some uh, anti seize on it or uh, ceramic grease and put it back in the in the caliper. Now put back uh, the Allen bolts, also uh, put a bit of grease on it. Also don't forget to uh, connect the wear sensor. And uh, you need to put back the, the caps. Now it's time to install the caliper spring, or how it's called, the retainer. can be a bit uh, finicky to install most of the time just align the holes and then uh, I'll be sure to uh, put it behind here mm -hmm. and not in front like I did Uh, be sure that uh, the clips are uh, all seated, all the way seated. Uh. Okay, now uh, the retainer clip is on. Uh, clean the surfaces of the disc brake, both sides, with some brake cleaner.
so now we can uh, put back the wheel, uh, remove the center cap, and if uh, the wheel, wheel is installed, then uh, lower the car, and then we can tighten the nut to spec. Be sure before you lower the car that at least uh, the nut is tight, but not that tight, it's just uh, well, it's not everything is not loose uh, right now. So, uh, as you can see, it's already uh, much better than uh, it was before. So, uh, but be sure that it's uh, tight. And now we do uh, the whole procedure for uh, well like it's uh, specified in the, in the manual. So now first we go in to lower the car. First you tighten up the, the nut to 200 newton meters. Now it's uh, tied to 200 newton meters. Then you loosen it. <coughs> With a half stroke. That's about a half. Now uh, you need to roll the car a half a turn or the wheel must uh, Roll half a turn, so uh, go. That's a half a turn. Now you tighten it up with uh, 15 newton meters. And then one sixth of a turn. So let's see what's one sixth. Well, uh, the wheel has uh, five spokes, so if I take that as a reference, like this, so uh, this is a fifth of a turn, so a little bit before that is, uh, is a sixth. Just about there, it feels really tight, so it should be fine. Yeah, that thing is tight.
Well guys, uh, that's it. As you have seen, it's uh, well a straight uh, to the point job. And well, this time uh, the hub uh, wasn't cooperating. So that was a bit of a struggle. It took us about, well, three hours now, including filming, three, four hours. Well, normally it uh, will take you, if everything is going smoothly, one and a half hour. If you're really fast, maybe an hour. So just uh, do it yourself. It isn't that complicated. The only thing you need, yeah, like I said before, is a, uh, a 12 point socket and uh, a, a slide hammer of co and, a, and a, um, a bearing installer. But if you have a shop press, then you can remove the whole strut if you want to. But uh, this is a bit easier. So, uh, yeah, and this is what we have. Well, uh, Robin, what do you think uh, about uh, this job? Oh, we did it before, so uh, yeah, we had a little struggle, but you see, we have always a struggle with some parts. Yeah, it's it, not it, in common. Uh, it, it, it's, it's always our own cars that have uh, having problems. Most, uh, most of the time, if I uh, do uh, a, a car for someone else, then uh, it's 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 going uh, it's going smooth sailing, but when uh, when it's your own car or in this case Robin's car, then um, most of the time it's uh, always hell. So uh, this time was always uh, of was uh, fun uh, as well. So uh, do you think we do another video together? Yeah, of course. Okay, well uh, we. Then I, your car. Oh, my car indeed. Uh, I've got some. Uh, suspension bushings I want to change so uh, um, well and I think it's not the last time we have seen this golf uh, we already done uh, a lot of work to it uh, like a new turbo and uh, well, pff, suspension and, and some uh, some other things so uh, I think we're going to see that car again distribution uh, oh, distribution indeed, indeed. so uh, climate control Oh yeah, the the climb, the, the, the compressor. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you like this video, then you know what to do. Hey, you can follow me around. So um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.